Elizabeth. Yeah. Will you go, please? In my camera bag, do you know where the polarizer is? The last section that we're going to talk about here is um, polarized light. And polarized light, uh, basically their uh, photons are all aligned. You know how we talked about if you use a uh, snoot, it kind of puts everything in a line. And that's kind of the way you need to think about uh, polarized light. All the photons are moving in parallel line. And what creates that is a reflection off of glass um, or off of water, anything like that. The light source hits the glass or the water, and when it bounces back up, basically it's bouncing those photons in a straight line in a small group. Um, it can make things look really washed out. Uh, you know, if you've ever looked at, at water, all you see is reflection, but if you have polarized sunglasses on, what happens, you can see through it. Um, if you're, you know, walking through uh, a tree area or something, you can get a lot of polarized light bouncing off of leaves and things that maybe have some moisture on them. If you put on a pair of polarized sunglasses, all of a sudden the trees look more green. So it can really, it changes the contrast and it really affects the, the saturation. Uh, it allows you to see through glass. It allows you to see through water, um, this, these polarizer filters. Uh, so polarized light is just the photons reflect off of glass or water and they're just bouncing back in a straight line. Um, the cool thing is we can block those photons out very easily with something that is a, a polarizer filter, like your sunglasses or a polarizer filter that can go on your lens. Thank you. Yeah. Um, are we good with polarized light? Elizabeth, do you have any questions? No. Okay, good. I learned everything pointing out of the back. All right. Um, polarized is a type of direct reflection. It's not a, a diffuse, it's a direct. Um, so just like direct reflection, only the angle of reflection will show the source. So if we change our angle, we're not going to get the, the polarized reflection. Uh, an image of the polarized reflection is always substantially dimmer than a photograph of the light source itself. That's how we can distinguish the difference between direct reflection and polarized reflection. Polarized reflection is going to be half the brightness of, a, of your light source or less. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So direct reflection, it was the same brightness, right? Distance didn't change anything. That didn't affect it. Where a polarized reflection it's going to be a lot dimmer than the light source itself. Which makes sense when you walk through those trees that are reflecting that back, you don't get blinded. So a polarizing filter removes the polarized reflection light, but it leaves the diffuse reflecting light. So again, it, those, the lights that's lighting the, the leaves, uh, the diffuse light that's lighting the leaves, you're going to still see that. It's just going to cut out the photons that are kind of parallel. A polarizer filter is really just two neutral density filters um, that you line up at a different angle. The way these work, male end threads into the your lens and then it's going to have a front part that rotates like that. Um, these work best when in, you're shooting 90 degrees from your light source. So the little rule is if you point towards your light source and you hold your thumb out, any angle with your thumb is really where the polarizer is going to work best at. Um, which makes sense because it's a direct reflection. So if you're not 90 degrees from the light source, you're probably not getting a true polarized reflection, so that makes sense. Um, this is just going to cut down or block the polarized reflection. Um, they, like I said, it's, there's two neutral, de neutral density filters. What does neutral density filter do normally? It's 
going to just cut down the light, right? Overall light, allowing it through. So if we've got two of them here, it's going to make the overall image a little darker. So if you use a polarizing filter, it's going to increase your exposure time. It's going to take at least a stop or two away from your exposure. Uh, it's going to increase saturation simply by cutting out and removing the polarized reflection, reflective light. Um, so is there a difference between the polarizer and the uh, variable neutral intensity filter? Yes. What's the variable neutral density filter is a single neutral density filter, but as you rotate it, it just increases in strength for the neutral density. Right. It's not two neutral dens density filters that are opposing okay. each other, if that makes kind of sense. Um, you, there's photographers out there, especially a lot of landscape photographers, that shoot with a polarizing filter on their lens all the time. They never take it off. Um, it's not going to hurt anything you do other than lengthening your exposure time. It will increase your, your color saturation. It will help with contrast. It removes all those nasty reflections. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing if, if you take a shot of a landscape, you don't even realize how much polarized light's coming back. And you put a polarizing filter on it and then take the shot. Huge difference. Huge. Um, and typically you don't even think about it. But most people just think about it when they're shooting over water because they want to cut down the reflection off the water. Good? Time for review? Okay, going back from the first part. Can we see light? No. Has to be hitting something, right? Or uh, color temperature. What the heck is color temperature? That Kelvin thing? What's that Kelvin yeah, thing? Kelvin scale. Kelvin From scale. The yellows and oranges all the way up to the highest blues. Blues, right? So blue is like a 10,000, and the yellows are down to like 2,500, right? Uh, fluorescence about 3,300. Uh, sun or daylight balance is around 5,500, 5,600. Um, you get into shade or cloudy. And that's a little more blue. Um, so with that, why are your images from baseball in the outfielder green? Why does it have a green cast to them? So what do we need to do to those images? Add magenta. So a lot of your photos that are coming through, especially day photos, I'm having to add magenta to them. I know Dave doesn't want to hear that because we've been doing battle with magenta and green. <laughs> but this is for a different reason. Um, what about over at tennis, Jacob, where the images are blue? You have to add yellow. And why, what, but why is it blue? Oh, His uh, images aren't blue. We, he, he and I just talked about this. It's the um, net. So the light goes through it and diffuses the blue on the players in the court. A lot of your photos, if you're shooting towards the south side of the court, are coming in very blue. Um, again, just think about what the light's doing in your frame. If, you, if, you're, if the athlete's on grass and it's sunlight, that light's coming down, it's hitting the grass, and it's reflecting that color right back up. You're going to need to wipe that color out. At tennis, you know, if they're on a blue tennis court or green tennis court, or if light's coming through, you know, a, a blue mesh fence, um, that's affecting your photo. Uh, so a lot of the tennis shots that are on, especially on that south side, I've got to add yellow to all of your guys' photos. And we had the same problem with football during football season. If we have a day game, I'm having to add magenta to a lot of the photos. So just think about the color cast that's coming through. Did you want to touch on um, no. what you told me? No. About, uh, <laughs> no, no, what? <laughs> about the, the baseball player, the one that I turned in, how it was blue, but it was because it was in the shadows, so that was uh, how it was his choice. So, yeah, if something is backlit and the athlete is in full shadow from themselves, so the athlete's backlit, 
um, it should be blue, right? Because the athlete is actually in shade. So if you add yellow to that, it might be technically correct, but it might not be kind of realistic to the eye. So just think about that, whether you want to add it or not. Um, Because you add yellow, and I think technically it looks correct, but it's hard kind of to believe it because I think you truly know it should be blue, if that makes sense. Um, what creates hard shadows? Small light source. Okay. Small light source. Does distance affect that? So how does that affect? Uh, that's further away. Further away is harder because of? Tarns are in line, but the and it goes back. What did you guys say originally caused small, small light or caused hard center, small light source? So as you move that away in relation to your subject, the light source actually gets smaller, right? Mm -hmm. But you're right, the photons are actually more in line, they're less spread out. What three things can a subject do to a photon? It can, becomes friends, it can piss it off. No, it it absorb. can absorb it, reflect, reflect it, it, and transmit it. Very good. Look at you guys. Wow. Explain transmission. It's an automatic or manual. It's four speeds. H. What's that? Oh. Okay, there's a clue, the one right below it. Direct or diffused? Okay, very good. What's direct transmission? It's when the light source is relationship. What's that? When you, love. Let me, you can't see direct transmission, Okay. right? So direct transmission is through a material that is translucent, right? You can't see it. So through air or through maybe glass, right? Diffuse transmission. Cloud. Cloud. Right, or our little white material up there. And then it becomes more Right, throws our photons around. Absorption. What does color have to do with absorption? Good. Sucks them up. Sucks them up. Uh, reflection types. Okay, what is, what's the difference between direct and diffuse reflection? Direct reflection would be like if you're shining a light source into a mirror and it's reflecting back directly into your camera. Good. And diffuse reflection is? Bouncing that angle that does not come into field of view. So it doesn't matter where you stand, it's the same brightness, right? It's not a good. Perfect. Angle of incidence? That's the, from the, the angle of actually the angle of incidence is from the light source. There you go. Right, and the angle of reflection is from, from the, from the, the camera to the camera. Perfect. And polarized light. Individual light rays are aligned parallel to one another. Half the brightness, they're normal, they're non polarized. Good. Are we good? No. No. Transmission. So, okay. Or Google. Questions? Hopefully that helped. All right. What time is it? Um, can I watch a short video?
and then take a break. And this video has absolutely nothing to do with class.